This is a virtual classroom. The virtual classroom feels like a classroom, or at least what I wanted to do is to feel like a classroom as a student and as a teacher. This is called WizIQ. It's quite simple and easy to use. First thing I do is check places as the teacher and as a student. And here I am. Let me test the microphone. Hello, I'm testing the microphone. I can see the bar is going uh, nicely above the uh, center, which should be fine. Microphone. Hello, I'm testing the microphone. I can see the bar is going uh, nicely above the uh, center, which should be. OK, I also checked the volume on my system to make sure that that's working well. I can also test there. That's fine. So the audio is working really well. OK, so I think see that everything is just fine. It might be a bit loud, but then I think it'll be OK. Cameras, you can see I'm using a log. OK, so I think a, see that everything is just fine. In. It might be a bit loud, but then I think OK, that was my natural voice. Cameras, you can see I'm using. That was the recording. All right, so I think it's all set and it's saved. So we've got 10 seconds to go, 8, and the class is going to begin. I'm going to hide this and make sure that this is turned on again. And welcome. Welcome to uh, this is Nelly Deutsch. And I'm very excited about this class and about teaching online. So hello, Deanna and Carl. Good to see you. I see the and Sevrici. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, I see that you've got um, your webcam, Carl and Sevrici, but that uh, Diana does not. OK, or you have your webcam, but you don't have a microphone. That's what it shows me, Diana. All right, I'm hoping that we'll be able to. Um, okay, all right. Thank you for letting me know. Um, Diana, you don't, you only have a webcam, so you may want to check that. Thank you. Just let me know if you'd uh, like to speak at any time and uh, if you want just the audio and not the video. No webcam. That's all you have, Diana. Oh, uh, you don't have, for some reason, you don't have uh, a microphone set up apparently. So you might want to go into your device settings. All right, why am I excited? Well, I'll tell you why. The two reasons why. One is the teaching in a virtual classroom such as this for a teacher um, who's new or a teacher who's been teaching for many year, years is very exciting because it feels like a real classroom. Carl, you've been teaching online like this so you know. Um, what about the others? Have you taught in a virtual classroom or an online environment such as this one? Just give me a thumbs up. There are uh, emotions there. You can give a thumbs up or thumbs down, a smiley, just to show that You're still here with us and that you're able to hear and respond. Hello, Maria. Welcome. All right. I'm not getting uh, any response, and I see that my audio is working. So the question was. Good morning. The question was whether you have taught in a virtual classroom, in a classroom such as this one, before. And I know Carl has because I viewed a recording of a live class. OK, so let's get started. Hopefully, um, you're hearing me well. Great. All right. So this session today is TESOL with WizIQ. I apologize for not being here um, on our regular day, which is Friday. And um, 
I'm glad that everything worked out and I'm able to be here today. Oh, it's your first time, Diana, so welcome. All right, so teaching English to speakers of other languages. I presume that everyone here wants to teach English. How many of you have taught English before to speakers of uh, other languages? It doesn't matter whether you're a native speaker or not, but teaching English to uh, speakers whose first language is not English and it's not their second language. So Maria has... And Carl has a couple of times a week. So you know about the excitement of teaching in a virtual classroom. And what about Diana? Monday to Wednesday. So you have some time off. That's good. Okay, Diana, feel free to use the chat. I hope you can see it uh, to respond. As we go, you can ask questions. Feel at home with a chat box. It's not like a classroom where you have to be quiet. In a physical classroom here, you can make as much noise as you want because I won't hear you unless I give you the mic. And you can use, you can make the chat box very noisy. You can add all kinds of questions and comments and just feel very, very comfortable uh, because you're never going to disturb me. Very good, because this is the right class for you, Maria, and for Diana, because that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about not only teaching, but about student learning. And here is the joke that I uh, put up everywhere I could, even my physical classroom. So all the teachers at my school have seen this. I placed it everywhere around the school, and I shared it with my students, too. I made copies and just passed it around. And the uh, cartoon says this, I taught Stripe how to whistle. And then his friend says, I don't hear him whistling. And the owner of the dog said, I said I taught him. I didn't say he learned it. And I think that's very much what happens in school these days, except for teachers who teach online, who understand that it's learning on, And it's about learning and Teaching is just something that uh, we do, but it's actually about learning. That's what's important. We want to make sure that our students are learning. Now, these are PowerPoint presentations. They appear in the course, and you'll be able to click on the image when you view the recording. So uh, make sure that uh, you view the recording for those of you who need the um, the course I'll share the course with you and those who would like the uh, link to the class because they lost it or they don't know how to get it I will get it for you and place it in the classroom right now so you can put it aside for later so that you can also get the uh, PowerPoint presentation and everything else. So let me just share uh, the class with you for later on, okay? Because um, you'll want to get the links to, uh, there we go. What else do I need to um, give you? I'd like to also give you the uh, PowerPoint presentation right now just in case you feel that um, you're not navigating properly or you feel that uh, you can't retrieve things. So to avoid any kind of uh, stress, I will share the link to the PowerPoint presentation. And you may listen to my voice as well as maybe click on the links. Okay, so here we are. There's the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So you've got everything you need. The course, if you want to join the course. Uh, those who join the course, by the way, there is a course uh, for TESOL. Those who join the course will get a certificate if they do all the assignments signed by me. 
and uh, it's worth something and I'll be able to give you references, whatever you need. It's always nice to have a certificate if you do the uh, assignments. Okay, but these classes are public. I do not provide support or anything else for those who don't join the class. So a little bit about some of these um, websites that I think you will find very, very handy. And I suggest you try to work with them uh, with the assignment for this week, and we'll get to, to the assignment very soon. All right, so these are all listening and um, watching, listening and reading actually, uh, which is not very passive, okay? But it's a way for students to acquire what they need. This one has um, really interesting, I just put the link in there, it's from the British Council. And it has some excellent uh, lessons. In addition, that's one of them. If uh, you click on the second one, there is another. Here we go. It's called Storyline, and we'll be looking at that as well. Storyline is also completely free. It's good not only for um, students of English. It's also uh, nice for young children, native speakers of English, and anyone who likes a good story, as uh, I'm sure many adults also enjoy good stories. All right, so take a look at those later on and see if you can use them during the week. Okay, there's a storyline. It's completely free and is anyone familiar with it? If you could just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're familiar with Storyline. It has actors and actresses who read the stories. The video, the quality of the videos, uh, you're not familiar. The quality of the videos is exceptional. It is absolutely, oh, Fatima, Fatima good to see you. Absolutely fantastic. Very, very high quality uh, videos. And uh, it's really worthwhile uh, viewing them. I shared them with a course yesterday and the students uh, enjoyed them very much. So take a look at those later on. Here's uh, one of the actors. His name is Ernest Borgendine. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's an American. I, I think he's, he must be in his 80s or maybe close to 90, if not 90 years old. George Orwell, nice. So yes, movies and stories and having someone read the stories is very, very relaxing. And it's a good way because we want our students to be relaxed. And what better way to relax than to the voice of uh, these actors? He's just amazing. So um, that's him. And then there's a story about the dog. Okay, Stripe. In addition, and I think this is really worthwhile, uh, to get your students on the ball with um, listening, there are lots of really great resources, audio and video, and uh, most of them are free, some are not. But I think that it's uh, also, if you click on it, when you view the recording, you'll be able to get the list. There are a lot of resources here for audio and video that you can use on WizIQ with your students. You can also include the audio files and add them to the classes and the video, the YouTube videos you can add to the classes. So keep that in mind. Okay, so that's just a little bit of uh, sharing before. All right, so we're going to get started now. What you're going to do this week is you're going to create a course. Carl, do you have a course right now running on WizIQ? I had a feeling that you do. Yes. All right. You might want to think of another course, a different course. Now, how do you choose a topic? I suggest you choose something different. 
just so you can practice and see what it's like to teach something you're passionate about. Not necessarily TESOL, even though you know that for TESOL you can teach anything. And I do. I teach uh, different subjects um, so that my students don't always feel that they're learning about English, but they're learning it in English. So it gives them a sense of accomplishment that they can do things without feeling that they're doing grammar or, you know, having a lesson on. So uh, you might want to consider that. So think about the things that you're passionate about and create what's called a KWHL, one of my favorite um, charts. I use this for doctoral students, MA students, for their dissertations. I use this for my students to come up with projects. I use this with, I use this with everybody because it's, it might seem simple, but it's a great way to start thinking about a direction. And in this case, you're teaching. So what do I want to know? You choose a topic. And if you find that you know a lot about it, but you don't want to know anything, then forget it. Choose a topic that you know something about, that you are passionate about, that you think that it's wonderful. It could be anything. Can you think of something that interests you outside of teaching your subject? So let's say if you teach English, can you think of something else that you're passionate about? I mean, English teachers generally have so many different interests. So I know that Maria, I just uh, saw a video of Maria. Maria plays the guitar. So maybe you'd like to um, teach um, how to play the guitar or something else, maybe singing, maybe about singing. Um, I would like to share a video with you just to get you going on different topics. Okay, so I think it's this one. Let me just make sure. Hello, everyone, and this is Dr. N That's not the one. <laughs> no, it's this one. Remember the first time you made something with your own hands? Or those times you decided you wanted to learn something? Those opportunities are all around you. It wasn't possible to learn with so many people from so many places before. Because tools like this didn't exist before. But now they're right in front of you. Welcome to Skillshare, where you're invited to take classes on anything from anyone, anywhere. Learn from experts locally in your neighborhood or online from anywhere in the world. Go at your own pace, complete hands-on projects, and connect with people both near and far. It's time to learn what you want, to pursue your passions, and become who you want to be. Learn differently than you've ever learned before at Skillshare.com. All right, you might think, well, Nelly, isn't that an ad? Yes, it is an ad, but that's not the point. It's not about what they're advertising. It's about the idea of teaching anything, because that's what people are interested in. Today, everyone wants to learn different things. And think about it. How would you like to learn something new in a foreign language? And actually, while you're learning it, because you're motivated, let's say you want to learn to do pottery, for example. Okay, I'd love to learn pottery. I mean, it's one of the things, you know, I, I studied art, but they, I never got to pottery. I did a lot of drawings and, and that's it. So I missed out on pottery. I could learn to do pottery and then teach it in English to others whose native language is not English. So just imagine they would be learning English through a subject that they're interested in. The motivation would be so high. Or if I wanted to learn something that I could only learn in German, what do you think? Do you think I would pick up German? 
I'm sure I would. So you would, Maria. <laughs> you would. And Maria, I know you know French, and so do I, but I would love to learn something in a foreign language. Bits and pieces. Okay. So think about it. What would you like to learn? What are you passionate about? And in the same sense, what would you like to teach? Because you know what? If you want to learn something, you're the best people to teach it. Because teachers can learn anything. And so can everybody else, but they don't know it. But teachers know that they can learn anything and teach it. So anything that comes to mind right now? Well, I've got pottery. I really would like to learn. Uh, there are other things, of course, uh, that I would like to learn, but that's something with my hands. I think pottery is double T. <laughs> Sorry about that, pottery. Anything? That's the way, Carl. We, 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 we make lots of typos. Don't worry about the pieces with the EI. <laughs> we all do this online. You know, uh, the best teachers, the spe best spellers are the worst typos. You know, we make really uh, bad spelling. Central here, yes. So feel comfortable with making mistakes. You know, we all know that we can spell. It's just typos. That's right. So um, any topics or you're a bit shy today? But anyways, think about it. Create your assignment for the week is to create a KWHL. Write down what you know about your passion, whatever you want to teach or learn. And then what do you want to know about it? How you intend to get the information or where you intend. Notice here you can write online, you can write a list of uh, resources, websites, or people that might help you. Okay, this, think of your students here. It's not only online, it could be face-to-face. -face. Frames, handcrafts. Okay, one thing, one thing. <laughs> skills, that's right, it could be skills, it could be anything. And then you write what you learned to see if you're ready to teach. And if not, you go back to, okay, it's cyclic. What do I know? Anything else that I want to learn and know? And then how am I going to get it this time? And then you end up here. So it's cyclic. It goes back and forth, back and forth. Once you do that, you are ready to create your course. Because remember, you're going to create a course. Okay, that's what uh, this week is about. You're going to create a course. I see we've got Christina. Hello. And Fatima, I believe I said hello. Let's see. Anybody else come in? Well, well, I didn't notice. I usually notice, but I didn't. All right. So when you come in, say hello so I know you're here. <laughs> Thank you, Fatima. All right. So we're, you're going to create a course. Um, all of you can get free premium accounts if you join the course. I think I gave you the link to the course. Um, let's make sure that everybody has it. Maria, congratulations. You got your free premium account today. I sent you an email. I'm not sure that uh, you received my email, but yes, you've got your free account. So congratulations. Because I'm not sure whether uh, teachers can create, non-premium teachers can create courses and, and do what they want. I'll share the course link with you in case you're interested in getting a free account, uh, premium account. I believe the, the account is, uh, the non-free is something like $199 or something. And the course is $12, so that's my favor. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, Carl, is that the ones that don't have a premium account? 
okay two classes a month I had no idea okay thank you for sharing that all right so Maria do you know that uh, you got it okay I'm glad I didn't get your response because uh, I guess I was not online all right so it's really exciting for me to be able to do this uh, you have no idea how much because I've asked was IQ used to be uh, free for everybody when I joined in 2007 it was free it went through a lot of things and the bills pile up hello Helena welcome all right so Helena um, the uh, assignment for this week is to create a course and I just went through the KWHL you will be teaching anything not necessarily what English as a foreign language or Polish you're going to think of something else that you'd like to teach that is not connected to your profession something that you want to learn and you're going to learn it so you can teach it so I thought of pottery because I've always wanted to do pottery okay so this is how you start uh, today we're going to go through the different parts of a course it is Carl you have a, a you have a free premium account don't you if not send send me the details and I'll get you one you don't are you sure all right so send me your details and I'll make sure that you have one by tomorrow because I think they're sleeping at Wiz IQ at this time I think it's nighttime there all right so make sure Carl that you get me because um, everybody who joins the course gets a uh, free um, what you did I you paid oh all right so here's the course Carl I've also um, if you paid in June it renews in June so you'll get a free one uh, you won't have to pay anything oh you're an org uh, org is different it's not a personal account so um, if you're interested in a personal account not an organization organization is something completely different that that costs quite a bit no, I'm talking only about um, so Carl send me an email anyways and we'll see what we can do okay I'll see what I can do all right so this is um, what you do first of all you've got the course feed which is the discussions did I skip something here no uh, which is a discussion it's called the course feed but it's a discussion there's the courseware which is actually built of uh, different things it's like aware software uh, hardware courseware <laughs> okay so the idea here is that it has everything you need to build a course you can add live online classes you can add content and there are different forms of content it could be PDF uh, word documents uh, PowerPoint embedded things YouTube um did i miss anything i think that audio you can also add audio and video files and then you can add tests as well and quizzes right now the quizzes are only in the uh, multiple choice uh, simple basic but they will get a little more elaborate very soon in addition you have course learners a list of the learners in your course and then you can enroll new role learners or you can allow the learners to invite friends and then of course you have about the course let me show you I'm going to screen share so you see one of my uh, courses so you can get an idea of what it looks like feel free to use the chat box please um, as I always say it's a way for us to connect because we don't see one another whenever there's screen sharing the system seems to stop on my I don't know if it stopped for a second uh, when I start the screen sharing on my Mac <laughs> you'll hear my words in the recording everything seems to stop 
Oh, that sounds good. Country craft ideas. Wow, that sounds great. All right, so let me take you to the uh, TESOL course. Okay, let's uh, go to the course. Here is the course. Okay, now I've got lots of courses just to show you. This is my personal account. It's not an organization account. So if I go to home, I get a list okay on the left of all my courses all my classes my content you see it's all divided up and my tests I don't have tests because I'm against tests which is not a very good thing but that's me okay so there we are so I'm gonna go to my courses to find my course okay so these are all my courses these are courses other people's courses which is also me because I'm a few people on WizIQ. IQ so this is my active learning this is the TESOL course so I'll go into that this is the class it's currently live and here is the left course feed because this is the discussion I can start a discussion um, I'll call this support for um, for TESOL, this is the class for TESOL with WizIQ. Okay, for this support. Okay, and then you can add questions here. Okay, I call this support, and then you'll add your okay your information here if you've got something to add here if you have any questions. I can delete this post as the teacher. I don't think you can as a participant. All right, I can also add another thread here and then you'll be able to add. Next, after the course feed, uh, by the way, all the content that you add is also part of the course feed. Okay, there's Maria, there's Jason R. Levine, there's Carl. Okay, people are adding. It's a bit long now. Uh, it will change very soon. WizIQ is changing all the time and improving, just like Google. If you notice, Google Plus is also improving and changing. So that's how it is with technology these days, because we have to adapt to the changes and to uh, what we need, to our needs. Okay, next, I go to Courseware. Okay, notice the paid changes. This stays the same, but the course feed is no longer black because I'm not there. This is where I am. And this has, I can add a live class. I can add content and a test. Okay, so here you can see the courseware. There's six tutorials in this course, six live classes. I can also move these around. I can remove it, but I can drop and paste. You see, I can move these around. You should, you know, because I don't, most of the time they're not really organized well. So you might want to move them instead of scrolling down. Okay, this is the tutorial for today. I shared the link with you in the chat box. Okay, these are the classes that will follow. Uh, this a class was already uh, given. There's the video, view the recording. I can also share. Notice I'm sh I can share Twitter, Stumble, upon F Facebook, and I can also share with my contacts. If I click on all. I believe I have over a thousand, right, 1,952 in this account. And then, of course, permission I can give. All these things you should take a look at. Every page has lots of options. Okay, the class is over. Let me go back. Okay, I'm just hitting the back button so I can get out of here. I can do something else. I can go to home. This is where I'll be able to navigate from. So I'm on home and I want to go back to the course. You may find this annoying, but technology is not perfect. It needs teachers to tell them how to make things better because they don't know. And I'm talking about technology people who don't know what we need. Okay, so I'm back in the courseware. Okay, that has all this information I can add. Next, course learners. Here I can have a list of the course learners. I can send them each a message or I can send a message to all. Currently there are 13. Here's the link to the course and I can also share the course on Facebook, tweet it, 
LinkedIn or Google+. Next, after the courseware, I'm going and the course learners, I can also enroll new. If I'm giving a course and I'm charging money for it, I may want to add my friends without them having to pay, so I would enroll them. And then they don't necessarily have to pay. Or I can ask for a code, a coupon or a code, so that they don't have to pay. Next, about the course, I'm on the left here. Here's information about the course. Once I give have the course... Have you considered using technology? I do English. this. People find it annoying. And I like to have my videos playing. Um, and then course highlights. I can edit the course if the course has not been closed. Okay, This is how I create a course or edit it. I give it a course title. This is what you're going to do. And then it helps you here. It gives you see sample on the right. And then I give it a subtitle. Okay, here are ideas on how to do this. And then exams, tests, they tell you what to do. And then category, they explain, okay, the category. And then a test. And then I find a image for the course from the WizIQ library, or I can take from my own. And then I write the highlights of the course, and they give me notice examples on how to do this. The example, they give you ideas, which is great, just like Moodle. Because I, I suggested that Moodle has lots of great things, so why not? I asked WizIQ to take some of the ideas from Moodle and other places. So if you get ideas, just send them. They'll be happy to learn. Here, they don't have an editor, a rich editor yet, so I use um, HTML. You can embed things. If you want to know how to embed things, I will help you. Okay, they're very easy. You can get all kinds of HTML codes on the internet for anything you need, including images. And then about the instructor, how much money? I'm charging $12 for this course. You may want to make it free, as you wish. And that's it. You update it. So that's how you create a course. And that's a bit about the courses. So let me go back to class, hoping that you saw all that. So were you able to see the screen sharing? The worst thing is to have people say, no, couldn't see a thing. Well, you'll see it in the recording. So I hope everybody was able to see that. Give me a thumbs up if uh, you were able to see the uh, screen sharing. Carl says, yes, Marie. Okay, if one person did, then I'm okay. All right. Just popping. Oh, yes, popping. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. That's right. Popping. Uh, once uh, the screen sharing... Well, not on me, Carl. You know, with me, it doesn't happen anymore. But with IQ's modular, you can move everything around and don't be afraid. In other words, let me just uh, screen share that for you so I can show you how you can make things, as Carl says, pop around. Adobe has it, but don't try it on Adobe because you'll get lost. Okay, so uh, let me pop everything up. There's the, uh, usually it's at the bottom left. And I can, there's an arrow, it says pop in. There, it's popped in. So everything is in place now. You can see myself. Here's my video, webcam, and then the attendee list. Okay, I'm going to go to the minimize, minimize, and minimize. So everything is gone. All you see now is the whiteboard, or at least what's on the whiteboard. So everything is on the bottom left. Okay, here's my arrow. Go down to the left, and then I'm going to pop things up. Click on it. It pops up. There I am. Now I, I can make it larger. Don't get scared if it gets huge and you don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> okay, you can maximize it and then minimize it. I'm going to pop in. Pop it back in. There right there. I'm going to go to the attendee list and notice I can bring it back down or I can pop it in. There, it's popped in. Now I want to do the same thing at, at the bottom left with a chat. So it first goes to the middle and then I'm going to, you see if you hover your mouse over it, it tells you what it is, pop in. 
And there we are. It's all popped in. Okay, so everybody's ready to go. Okay. So teaching online consists of two formats. One is time dependent and one is non-time dependent. Notice I'm making these words up. I'm sure they're not in the dictionary. Synchronous is time dependent. That's the WizIQ chat. If you make a real chat, uh, as opposed to a discussion form, are time dependent, real time, right now. And synchronous is not time dependent. That's the course, that's the discussions uh, where you share information, where students can add content, can be both asynchronous and synchronous. Activities cannot be synchronous. In other words, we cannot play a game and expect to finish it unless we have a whole day. That's the idea. So activities, activities are usually uh, asynchronous and you can't finish it within a limited time. Asynchronous is where you create a course, you can schedule a class, you can develop content, upload the content, add the content to the class, invite your students and start discussions in that order. Okay, so that's what you're going to do this week. You're going to create a course, schedule a class, develop the content, PowerPoint presentation, or Prezi if you want, and add it to YouTube, upload the content, add content to class, and so on. You can be as creative as you want. You might want to create a class, add the content, record it through Screencast-O-Matic, and then that'll be your content. There are lots of things that you can do, so don't feel limited in any way. Now, the synchronous means that you'll be creating a class. You'll schedule a class, you'll develop the content, same content, upload the content through your course to the class, invite participants, share the session, and add this to your calendar. I hope you all have some kind of a calendar. To remind you it's really important and you can also I have a Google Calendar where you can also share I'm going to screen share again what's nice about WizIQ now is that they fix the screen sharing so it doesn't uh, go back second third time it goes faster so I want to show you the top here of a virtual classroom there's the file here edit and then back and forth this is your library. When you upload content to your courses, it'll come here to your content library. You'll open it up like I just did, and then you can click on Add to Class. This is what I did. These are some of my uh, PowerPoint presentations. In addition, you can also upload from your computer, but it takes more time. I wouldn't do it because you don't want to get stuck. It does work, it just takes time, and you can't do it during the session because that's also draining for everybody. In addition, if you look at the top, you'll see Media Player. You click on the Media Player, and then this is what I played before. You missed it, uh, those who came in late. But here's the Janelle other one. Deutsch, and I'm so excited because now WizIQ has Course Feed. And let me show you how you can create a course and add course feed. So you might want to do that as well. That's just a uh, YouTube video that I created and I added it to the class just to show you that it's possible to do that to uh, create short videos and do that. In addition, there's the poll. So you can create a class for yourself, record it as Carl did for last week's homework. And, um, and then share it. You can also create polls and publish them. Okay, um, if you want to see what it looks like, I don't know if any of you have tried this, uh, but for example, I might, I'll ask you, um, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay, and then uh, one option is yes. And the other one is no, and you have to choose one. I can add another option, maybe, not now, later, or something like that. Uh, and then I can uh, save and publish the poll. 
and then I'll wait for the results. So go ahead. If you can just um, add to the poll. Let's see. And if I'm if I don't remember what was yes and what was no, which I don't, I just hover my mouse over it and it says option no. So you don't have to remember anything. That's what's nice about online teaching and learning. You don't have to remember a thing. It's all there. You just have to know that it's there and relax and realize that technology is easy and it does facilitate and make your life easy. But in order to realize that, you have to give it a chance and see. Okay, so no, uh, no question. One person said no question. See, it says one user. The other user says yes, there is a question. And there are only two votes, but I see six, which includes me. So there should be five responses. So what does this mean? It either means that three students are asleep or they don't know what to do or they're doing something else. They're, they're multitasking. They're, they're not here. Ah, okay. So now we have, let's see, we've got four three and one one more or actually another two yes i agree with you carl i was just going to tell you talk about that notifications you can turn notifications off would you like me to show you you don't have to get those email notifications especially when you you're the doer right carl when you add uh content you get notified that you added content and obviously you know that what you've done so you don't really need it but you can turn that off you can turn uh, notifications off i always wonder about don't they know that it's me but no computers are uh, you know they're they're programmed to do things that are not teachy that's why i think teachers have to get involved they have to make things make sense for learning so we've got two and one. That's only four. All right. So most do not, but at least one person has. Uh, let me just share that with you before I close. Let me. Oops. I think I just messed it up. OK. All right. So let me um, show you where you can actually turn notifications off because I think that's really important. So you go to the course. Um, OK, this is the course. And you want to turn notifications off. Uh, you go here, up to the top right under your name and home. You open it up, and then it has course settings. Everybody has this. And this is where you have your course settings. So new enrollments, enable. You won't have as many as a student. You'll have all these as a teacher, less as a student. So you can, you can uh, compare it to yourself as a student in TESOL and then see what you have as a teacher. You'll have more as a teacher. And then discussions, you have to enable the feed or you won't have it. And then here we are, notifications, okay? Send me a notification email when a new post is added, when someone comments on my post. So you can turn that off. Okay, Carl, I hope that helps with everybody. All right, so let's get back. Um, to the course but anything else okay if there are features that you want to have just let me know or let WizIQ know or let us both know <laughs> but um, that's how that's what I've been doing since 2007 and I'll tell you once the history of my uh, romance with WizIQ but it started with my telling them I don't like this I like this do this do that and they listened Adobe Connect wouldn't listen to me. Illuminate would not listen to me. But WizIQ did. Or they can turn it off too, Carl. You don't do it for them. They turn it off. Um, I suggest you go to the course with me, to the TESOL course, and you will be able to turn yours off. I can go in as a student in one of my courses if you don't believe me. Do you want me to do it? 
or you trust me. Carl, let me know. If not, I'll do it. <laughs> then send me emails, Carl, okay? Send me emails and I'll make sure that they respond to you. Okay? You trust me? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, yes. As a student, you can also turn notifications off. Now, this is about learning together. That's the idea. The idea is that finally online, we can all learn together. And that's what's exciting. So you can start a thread in the course feed as a student and as a teacher. You can share a link of the course and the live class. This is what you're going to do. You're going to start a th thread in the course feed for TESOL. Um, I don't know if I still have it on my mouse. Yes. Okay, this is the course. You join the course and you add, if you haven't joined already, and you start a thread. Does everybody know what a thread is? It's called a discussion thread. Why it's a thread? Okay, it's not something the teachers came up with. It's, okay, these are technical words. And then you share a link of the course that you create, because you're going to create a course and the live class. You're going to join the course, each other's courses. We're going to join everybody's courses because we're going to learn together. So Carl is going to create a new course, Carl, uh, with a premium account that I'm going to uh, give you or you're going to get. You're all going to create a course. You're going to share the course with each other. But in order to do that, you need to get the link of the course, add it to the course feed for TESOL. Then you're going to create a class, schedule a class, and you're going to share the class with us. Even though we have it from the course, you're going to do it anyways. And then we're going to view your recording and we're going to add feedback. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of work this week. Oops, did I miss something? I think there was something else here um, that I might... Yes. You're going to schedule a class. You're going to... I think I went through this. Okay, so how do you schedule a class? Does everybody know? Just give me a thumbs up if you know. If you don't know, a thumbs down. Okay, thumbs up if you know. You don't have to worry. If you don't know then you're going to learn. But you have to know that you don't know and what you want to know. Okay, what about, uh, let's see, Diana, this is your first time. So this must be a lot of information. But like I said, you don't have to remember anything because everything is there. And if you hover your mouse over anything, it tells you what it is. So it's really, really intuitive. You can put your thumbs down. If you don't know how to put your thumbs down, except this way, of course, then you go, there's a smiley. In the chat and if you need to pop your chat remember how to pop it pop it in okay Fatima knows then that's what you do and then there's a smiley there you can add your thumb up okay let's see if, and Ines hello Ines Ines if you're new or if you need help please ask we're here to help one another so we can all be better online teachers or teachers in general because you know teaching online really does give us confidence and it does improve our teaching in face-to-face -face classes because uh, online it's about learning not about teaching so we become better teachers who learn our students Okay, Ines, I hope everything is okay there because I'm not getting a response and I hope that um, everything's okay with Deanna. If not, please uh, send me a message so I can help. This is for everybody. This is my, um, my easy email, very short, just nellydeutsch at gmail.com. Oh, she is? Who's a good friend? Oh, Ines is your friend. That's wonderful. Hello, Ines. Well, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me if it's too 
Okay, that's great. I'm here to, um, to make you an excellent online teacher. And then you can teach me everything that you learned because um, it's all about learning. Okay, so I'm going to pass the mic around. Um, I want to remind everybody that teaching online is about enthusiasm. I don't see um, Helena. I guess she had to go. All right. So I can pass the mic around for any questions or comments, any questions about what you're going to do, because you're going to create a course and you're going to add a class, a live class like this one to the course in order to decide what you want to teach. You're not going to teach English. You're going to teach something else. You're going to create a course for something else. If you want storytelling, that's fine, but not necessarily what you teach. Okay, so in order to decide what to teach, you will need to figure out what you're passionate about. Sit down and create a KWHL. What do you want to know? What do you know about the subject? What do you want to know? How are you going to get the information? And what you learned is what you're going to teach. If you don't know enough, you go back until you know as much as you need so you can teach this. So any questions, so I can pass the mic, pass the mic around so you can uh, speak, say hello. <laughs> hello, Ines. So can I pass the mic around so you can try them out? I'll just do it. I'll just do it. And then you can say hello. And if there's a lot of noise, I'll, um, there, Carl's on first. His system is used to uh, was IQ, I guess. Hello, hello Carl. Hello, hello. How are you? Good to hear your hello, voice. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, yeah, my, my question, uh, well, the only question I have is about <laughs> this free premium account. Um, if my current personal account could be turned into that free premium account, that, that would be great. Because uh, uh, when I originally joined with IQ, um, I came in on a 30-day free trial, and then having a uh, lengthy conversation with the uh, the sales team, um, I explained what what I'm doing on with IQ, what I would like to achieve with with IQ, uh, to bring my community of learners in with me as well. And I ended up uh, with a personal account having organizational privileges so I could bring another five tutors on board mm. with, uh, with myself. And um, it's a little too much because I don't need the facilities that an organization can give, but they've charged me for it. <laughs> so would you like to go <laughs> back? Pro- um, would you like to turn it into a like personal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go back to Solo Pro, which is what I originally paid for, because what, what I did, I originally paid $190, which gives me 12 months access, um, so I, I can create a maximum of uh, 52 classes in any one academic year, and I can just run throughout the year, and I, I've sent some numerous emails regarding this, just saying, okay, you can keep the extra ho- $190, I'm not interested in that, just as long as I get uh, permanent access with WizIQ on Solo Pro, then that would that's all I need, but they, they fail to respond to me. All right, I don't know why, I'll, I'll send me send me an email and I'll, I'll sort it out and we'll get it fixed. Okay, okay. I, I originally, yeah, I, I sent the email on Gmail and on Facebook, it's, it's the same email, because uh, I mm. I was promised loads of facilities um, so I could uh, schedule and charge for classes and the WizIQ system doesn't seem to uh, give the operational uh, support that I I wanted um, because they promised it and I don't think they can really say, well, you know, we made a mistake. They're, they're just, I think they're too 
scared to come and speak to me again. They they just ignore me when I go on that. No, I don't think so. I think no, no, no. I think you're just you're talking to the wrong people. I've spoken, <laughs> I've spoken that's to everybody I, <laughs> from from, from yeah, sales well, to support. still the wrong people. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're wrong people. I suggest you set, send me an email. I'll send it to the right people okay. and, and try to figure out why why this is happening. It shouldn't be happening. Okay, but you, all right. So for Dima, I don't. Email. Yeah, I'll, I'll. Yeah, that that will resolve because I just forward it and I just add. Yeah. You know, just take care of this, please. And and it's usually done very quickly. Yeah, I know the, so, uh, the last know, time that I think the last time that you responded to this, uh, Doctor Nelly, you said that the. Um, I'll send it to the uh, chief executive officer who, who's never been in touch with me. I've never heard from him. About that? Yes. So you mean you've sent me an email before? Yes. So then you must have had an answer to another email. You must have more than one email. Send it, send it to I'll me again. It. I'll try to look for it. Send me all your email accounts. Okay. Because... Or I can just write your name and then I'll get it because I save it. I don't delete anything on my Gmail account. So it's got to be there. If you send it, it's got to be there and I'll Gmail. just uh, see what's Gmail, happening. Yes. Yeah, then. Yeah. Then I should have it and I'll just take a look and see. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. I don't see. Um... Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. Who's that? Maria? No. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, it is Maria. Hello. You're a star, Maria. I'm, I'm so proud of you. Oops. Oh, no. The class just ended and uh, didn't have a chance.